Hi everybody, it's Dwan. I'm back in my sewing room. Yay! Uh, there's Blarney. He has a sore and he started licking again. So we had to explain this shirt. And it has a little pocket in it. Doesn't it? You're pretty sweet. You're a little blind though. And there's Dublin. <laughs> so it's beautiful October. It's hard to believe that Halloween isn't that far. I wanted to show you these. So we have three. There's the uh, gnome on the range. And then there's gnome for the holidays. And then this one that I'm doing is the Boo Crew. So in the package, you get, well, I'll just lay the cover. Then you get the instructions. Okay. Then you get the pattern to trace and then the placement sheets, and I'll go over those. And then you also get all the fabric. So you will get all the fabric, like say in there, and there's the background, and then there's a little envelope with all the fabric, and it's all laser cut. So that is why it's expensive, but can you imagine cutting all these pieces? So super nice, so that's all there. And because the pattern's included, you can do use the pattern again, you know, you, over and over. So when you're la they're laser cut, I already cut part of this, but just so you see, there's the little pieces. And I found to cut these to go on the white side. You have to be quiet. Yeah, go lay down. So you just cut the little dots there. I found that if you go from this side, it's too hard. So we're going to just cut like that. And I use my Henkel knife, Henkel knife, my Henkel scissors. And there's one. So it's much easier to do it from this side because I can see. The K Buckley ones that we carry, so we carry both, are really nice. They're super small. So they just cut like that. So they get right in there without cutting anything more than you need. And the K Buckley are, um, they have actually a grade on them. So if you're doing this on your own and you don't have the laser cut, um, the K Buckley scissors in a bigger size too are nice. There's actually a medium in between these two and they're really nice because they're serrated edges. So they cut really nice. Not serrated like a knife, like you wouldn't even notice it. So, okay. So once you have those all apart, and what I did is when I did them, I kept them in their colors because it was easier to find the map. Okay. Let me just bring it over here. I have some pieces I haven't put on, and I'm going to bring this guy over. He's a little. Okay. Now the other thing I want to show you, and this is my first time using it, sorry cameraman, <laughs> is the applique sheet. And they, they suggested it for my um, collage too. So it's a, called an applique pressing sheet. It actually comes with this cute little pattern too, so you can try it out. It's good for many things, but I really liked it for this. I, I'm so glad I got, got it. You can use parchment paper um, it's not as good, like this has a, um, it, although it feels slippery, it, things stay put on it. So I actually did all my pumpkins on it too. So with these, there's my pumpkin that I had, and I'll just do the last one so you can see. And I just peel the backing, and I'm going to put it down like this. And I'm actually going to just get a little press and then it won't move. And then I'm going to take the little stem. When you peel it off, because it's petite, you want to kind of keep track of where the shiny side is so you know you're putting it on because if you put it on backwards, it's going to stick to your iron. And then just rather than um, try to put these on and it moves the stem, I just touch the stem and then it stays in place. So it's really been nice to use. And then there's a leaf, and I'll put 
two rooms on this one actually. I have two left. So the placement of these were easy. They're just uh, pumpkins, a stem. I think I did a lot on that side. I'm gonna do these on this side. And then it's important to, before you peel them off, to let it cool. So this one's cool and I can just peel this off. If you try it and they're not cool, they tend to peel just off the whole thing. So there's one whole pumpkin. And then I can just bring this over <laughs> to here. And I'll show you that later. But now it's out of the way. And I'll peel off this a little more. <laughs> I'll place them in the right place. And that one's cool. Okay, so besides that part, like even though I knew the placement, what's nice about this is, so you have these trace patterns, and this is the one that you trace, and if you photocopy this for whatever reason, you always want to make sure that that is one inch because it changes on some photocopiers. So you have this, which is tracing the pattern. So if you want to make another one, but then you also have these sheets that are placement only. And for this, I'm going to just pin this down here. Get rid of this. I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to pin it down to my wool mat. And then it tells you to what order to do it. The shirt, pants, beard, hat, which is either white, orange, yellow, which is white, orange, white, orange, yellow for this one. And then nose and then shoes. So I'm just gonna place this on here. I could actually pin this if I wanted to like that. Okay. And then, uh, so they tell you the pants for the shirt and the pants, so what I'm gonna do. Now, if you find that these are hard to peel off and you don't wanna rough the edges up and fray them, you can take them like this. I just do a little fold and you can take a pin and it just pokes through there. I'll try this one again. So let's try this little guy because it's harder. So rather than peeling on the edge, I just fold it because it puffs it off. And then you can take the pin and you can peel it off. There. So that, you know, batiks are really nice actually for applique because they're tighter weave. Okay, so I'm gonna do my shirt. So the placement's right there so I can see it. And then my pants. So this is had been folded, which is no big problem. So I'm just gonna press it and it's gonna stick, but not permanently. And then my pants, this guy's gonna go right like that. Well, that's done. And then I'm gonna do the beard next. Now, when you're using white, they suggest that you use two layers of white. The nice thing about this kit is it's two layers of white. And that's so that this doesn't show through the white. If it was just one layer, it would. So that's so nice that they've done that already. And that's why it feels a little stiffer than the other ones. So I just placed the beard. I could go and place a hat, but I kind of just like to do, let's place this right. Just a little touch because then it stays in place. Okay, and we don't have the hat here. I just have to grab it. One second. Okay, so here's the hat. I can't feel that early, so I'm gonna. I just folded it and then it popped up on the middle. And this hat is not the same. It's a, they have three different hats. So this one is this one, the straight one. They have one going to the left, one to the right. And now I'm just gonna press that. 
I'm going to cut it long because it's not the permanent one. We are missing a nose. Right here. And then we're also going to need this guy. These are for the candy corn that I haven't done. But we will need this. Oh. So just little three little things I have to cut for the owl. Owl. Bat. <laughs> okay. So I'll bring the nose back over. So that's the next one. This is peeling off easy. He goes right here. And I'll just touch that. And then if you're um, I did keep this picture, one of the pictures, doesn't matter which one, but it's kind of nice to have one handy, just so you see the color. So I don't use the black one, I use the yellow. Let's just fold this, there it goes. So you need a pin there. And then this back goes like that. Cute! And then these are the shoes. So yeah, didn't even have to use a pin. Now this just peels off and I'm gonna tuck, you can see under there, I'm gonna tuck the shoes under there. So peels up easily and shoes. There. Now if it's right, I'm just gonna give it a little press. I won't lose my bat. So I'm gonna let that cool, because it'll peel up as one piece then. So clean, hot. Um, also too, if you're worried about, this is really, um, because it's laser cut, there was no steam seam or anything coming through. Um, but if you're worried about that, you can use the Teflon sheet that just will protect your iron. So you would just go like this and not protect your iron. Yeah, so I just keep a Teflon sheet all the time actually because it's a good idea. Is that cool enough? Let's see. And then I'm just going to take the hat. Oh, coming off as one. There's my gnome. And it's still all ready to iron and stick to the fabric. I'm just going to bring this over. Because I actually, there's a couple color pictures. So you can um, have one over here and have one at your ironing board too. So I'm going to keep that. And I can see that this guy is going to go here. So I haven't placed the tree yet. And they don't need to be, um, well, because they're one unit, they'll just go like that. I don't need my pressing sheet. So this guy, I can see that he is sitting with the tip of his beard, just about like, yeah, his hat with the headlight. And these guys aren't in placement. So I'm gonna put him there. And then this tree goes actually underneath them. So now that I have that placement. So this background came with the kit, which is super nice. It's a variegated one. And I'm just going to drop this and he goes down to, let's see, right about there. So because these are tangly, I just bring them down like that. It's just under his hat. And now I can lift him up and I'll widen that all out like that. So that's not down, but these guys, because I use that pressing sheet, they're all one piece. So I can lift them up easily. I'm going to place them back down there. I'm making sure that's just a little bit above. Okay, and then this guy is just a little over there. And then my pumpkins, because I used my pressing sheet, they're all one piece. We have one down here between them. They do look a little closer than that, don't they? So I'm gonna bring that closer. Yep, and then that one. 
The other thing I did is, it tells you the size of this finished. So what I did is I drew a chalk line so I know where that has to stay. Um, this can be made into a pillow, which is on the front, or it can be made into a wall hanging or a table runner. And mine's gonna be a wall hanging. It also shows you great ideas for stitching around or uh, the quilting lines or not stitching around. If it's gonna be a wall hanging, maybe you don't want to, you can quilt all over. The other thing I wanna point out is there's stitched lines here, like through my machine. And I actually did that before I peeled off the paper and placed it. So I stuck it up on the wall there, the placement of, not on the wall, on the window. And then I drew the lines with a chalk marker and then I sewed them. Yeah. So that was done before. And then I could place everything. The dog's licking my legs. <laughs> weird <laughs> okay <laughs> weirdo <laughs> okay so i have a few more pumpkins here we see we have one at his foot here i'm just gonna move this guy over here a bit let's go like that and then that move it over and there we go and then he had a couple pumpkins over here that and do I have enough here I have oh I think I have three here yep he had one over here so some of the pumpkins had two leaves some had one I think you can either follow the picture exactly of which ones had two but I don't think that's gonna matter so I still have to put on the moon up here and um, the candy corn but that's how it's coming along so with this one, because it's going to be a wall hanging, I'm just going to actually brush off the chalk and I'll probably just trim it straight. It's actually really straight and quilt it as a whole. Yeah. So I probably won't trim it down very much at all. Okay. I think I didn't forget anything. Yay. Okay. Super cute, right? Welcome to Gnome Land. Happy fall. <laughs>